came here to do two things and two things only. Purge heretics and Why steal property. property. And I already stole your property. So let's do this. Face your heresy! Holy Emperor! Welcome to the grim darkness of the future, where fun isn't allowed, happiness is banned, peace doesn't exist, and there's only war. Abandon reason! No, only war! In this war, it's us versus them. Us being the Imperium of Man, led by the Almighty Emperor himself. There is no shelter for those who oppose the Imperium of Man. And them being anybody that isn't us. For the sake of simplicity, we'll just call them Xenos. Xenos. And what's the only thing defending us from them, you might ask? Space Marines! Get off the ship, Space Marines! Space Marines! Space Marines! <laughs> Genetically modified, just like the vegetables at the grocery store, only instead of staying ripe for long periods of time, they're crafted by the Emperor to purge heretics. <laughs> Die! We're talking Are two sure hearts, we're them? talking three lungs, yes. we're talking night vision, we're talking eight foot tall, okay. 800 pound they? monsters just that look like, like Hulk Hogan ate Boogie 2988 and covered himself in a steel suit of armor the size of a Range Rover. We are the bringers of death! Think of them as religion-fueled death machines held bent on exterminating any race that isn't human, while also not being racist. Racist? Space Marines aren't racist, we love all races. As long as they don't have green skin. Eat bolt gun! Or, you know, belong to a different religion. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would call us racist. I'm a black priest for Emperor's sake. Even gods may die! We don't hate any races, except orcs, and Eldar, and Dark Eldar, and Necrons, and Tau, because nobody likes dumbass weeaboo space communists, but at least they aren't trying to eat us like the Tyranids. Glossing over all that lore that you don't need to understand, one such chapter of Space Marines are the Ultramarines, or if we're being honest, Ultra Smurfs, that are charged with exterminating the orcs on one of your manufacturing planets that are stealing your shit. Clever of the damned orcs. How important is this shit that they're stealing, you might ask? Strategic value absolute. So, I'm... I'm guessing it's that's pretty important me. then. It's Strategic important value absolute. Yeah, doesn't no make things any clearer for the audience. Strategic value absolute. You occupy the role of Captain Titus, a soft-spoken junior officer voiced by the legendary Mark Strong that's joined by an OG sergeant and a turbo nerd subordinate named Leandros that constantly hounds you about not following a dipshit rule book called a codex. Is that wise, Captain? The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Shut the fuck up, the Admirals. For the Emperor! To be perfectly clear, I beat the entire game once in its default state and had so much of a blast, I beat it again immediately afterwards, only with mods out the ass. So instead of playing as a calm and collected Crypt Marine... This actually is pretty cool. I played as a Blood Marine, which, if I'm being honest, was a slightly different experience. Die, scum! No prisoners! For the Emperor! Ah! So if you're about to write this video off as heresy or confusing, I understand. I just grew up playing an RTS called Dawn of War and would rather play as a Blood Raven than an Ultramarine Smurf Blueberry. None of this is really important unless they're purging and also, spoiler alert, transitions are weird. The orcs invading your planet and trying to steal your huge ass titan tank are a super diverse bunch, ranging from puny little orc children that shouldn't even exist. Hey, get back here. Don't run away from me. Why do you even exist? Why? Come on. Come on. Yeah! All the way up to the orc this war the boss, boss Grimskull himself, who was basically Shrek in his final form. You try to steal my giants? Steal my loot? I'll rip your guts right out your throat! Equally as diverse are the weapons at your disposal to eradicate them with, from a dinky bolter pistol all the way to a heavy bolter, because when it comes to orcs, the caliber you're firing can never be too high. I'm gonna need a heavy bolter for this heresy. The quickest way to purge through scores of orcs? Melee. Getting up close and personal is not only the fastest way to cut through a horde of orcs with single, double, and triple hit combos, but believe want to get fancy, you can melee three times and mash stun to curb stun multiple enemies and choke slam any motherfucker still standing. So it's safe to say that when it comes to this move, the Emperor most definitely does approve. I said, save some. Wait, what did I say? I'm too hard, I'm stuck in the terrain. You just flipped. Brother! Okay. Brother, I am stuck in the terrain. Where's Captain Diomedes when you need him? Brother! 
Brother! Brother, I am pinned here! Eventually, you'll realize you can't just slice your way through the game. <laughs> chaos Marines chaos and their pedantic piece Marine. of shit leader meme rock. <laughs> that that noise cannot yeah. defeat me! And you'll need to start firing guns if you want to survive. Or, more specifically, bolters. Bolters, brothers! If you call this thing an assault rifle, I'm gonna break your arms. Because it may be used like an assault rifle, only instead of firing a 223 the size of a crayon, or a 308 the size of your finger, it fires a 998, which... Should actually be a 75 cal according to the lore. That's essentially like firing a self-propelled can of Red Bull music. that explodes. Meanwhile, blows <laughs> after penetrating its target, making it almost into an assault rifle RPG hybrid. How many fucking robots does this place have? Are we invading an Imperium outpost or Amazon headquarters? I should have never canceled my prime. You have downward variants and upward variants, like the Bolter pistol, in case you've got something heavy in your hands, and my personal favorite, the Stalker Bolter, which is the most satisfying sniper rifle I've ever had the privilege of using. Just like Sesame Street, you ready? And one, and Two, and not three, not four, five. I'm really glad that all the orcs saw that are about to be burned, because that was embarrassing. If you absolutely, positively, have to expend as many rounds as possible, the Storm Bolter does exist, which is like a double-barreled LMG that's cool for the first five minutes that you use it. The rate of fire of the Storm Bolter? Perfection. The accuracy of the Storm Bolter? Eh, just put them anywhere that's remotely close to a target. I don't really give a shit. But better alternatives do exist, because the game gives you four slots consisting of a primary, secondary, long range, and- Fuck, 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 there's way too many fuck! I kept the standard bolter and stalker bolter throughout most of the game, because sometimes one bolter just isn't enough to stop a horde of orcs trying to crump your ass into outer space. I'm gonna need two bolters for this heresy. But once I started fighting the forces of chaos, I dropped the stalker for the last cannon, or Laser Cannon, aka the Space Marine Spartan Laser, that was clearly superior, because here's me killing a Chaos Marine with a Bolter. Thank the Emperor! I was starting to think he was invincible there for a second. And here's me doing the same deed with a Laz Cannon, slash Laser Cannon. By the Emperor, that's powerful! For your heavy slot, it's all about the Vengeance Launcher, which fires sticky nades that you can personally detonate, because who wants to launch rockets when you can launch Vengeance? A Vengeance Launcher. That sounds promising. Even a flame-bursting shotgun exists, but all of these specialized weapons rip through ammo at an incredible pace, so honing your bolter skills is the way to go. Burns them in flame! Burn in holy fire! Navigating the levels is obviously done by either running or rolling. Don't ask me how the hell these characters roll in this much armor. It's a long story. But channeling your inner Dark Souls character to kite enemies or get to objectives faster is a significant portion of your playthrough. It's even useful in boss fights, because who needs to kill orcs when you can just roll out of the way and have orcs kill themselves? Here he comes! Here he comes! Here he comes! Oh, baby! How does it feel to get crumped by a member of your own race? On that note, there are even these little Mike Wazowski-looking dudes called Squigs that explode on impact and are arguably better at killing orcs than you are. So this theme of orcs killing themselves is not a new phenomenon. Come on, Squig, merge! Merge into the group! Get in there! Get in there! Yeah! But as I was saying, you won't always be running or rolling through the terrain because eventually you'll gain access to a jump pack, which when combined with a thunder hammer is like an NBA dunk contest mixed with Super Smash Brothers. Outside of LeBron, five seconds left. LeBron leaps! Oh my god! LeBron James with a complete disregard for life! the Emperor's wrath! This jump pack also happens to be wonderful at getting you places in record time. It's almost like using unbridled rage as a mode of transportation. I fucking love my commute! And now that you know what you're swinging, shooting, and zooming around with, there's one thing that enhances everything, and that's called Fury! If being a space marine wasn't already super soldier enough, you can channel Fury, which builds up as you purge heretics and, well, 
Deliver merciless justice upon the enemies of humanity. That means your health surges. That means you hit harder. That means you turn 30 seconds of hacking and slashing into a 10 second nightmare for any enemies in your general vicinity, punctuated with curb stomps that are extra earth trembling. Oh, that never gets old. This fury becomes more and more powerful as the game goes on and there's even a marksman mode. So if you ever wanted to enter a slow motion bullet time mode as a badass space marine, here's your shot. <laughs> And the only aspect of the game that I love more than the combat, movement, and gear are the objectives. I'm pretty sure every objective in the game is either three words or four words, and that's the way it should be. Those guardsmen cannot survive that long. We find a way to destroy the gun. So you may be able to criticize some stretches of the game for being just running and rolling between elevators. Hey look, I'm on a lift. Does anybody know if repeatedly rolling or sprinting is faster? I've been at this 200 years, I still don't know. Hey look, a lift! But it focuses on what it's good at, which is violent purging and eradicating any life form that doesn't look like you. Ah, stop assisting! I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I would say sorry for hitting you so hard that the game glitched, but I don't apologize to Xenos. The story isn't all that important, seeing as the game only takes five to six hours to beat, and the best character is Orc Warboss Grimskull, because he's the only character that doesn't put me to sleep with her monologuing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that my second playthrough was any better because with all the mods I was running, none of the story made any sense. Second Lieutenant Mira, 203rd Cadian Regiment. It is the Bane Blade! You are in command. I'm all that's left, my lord. That damn gun. We don't have the numbers to make an assault, and as you might have seen, it's shooting down all our support vessels. Engaging warp spider! Ah! A warp me, spider! But at least you get to hook up with some blood ravens to cleanse an entire bridge in the end sequence, and given their history of kleptomania, I'm shocked they didn't steal anything. Hippity hoppity, where the fuck is my property? You're gonna hit the final boss fight with Mimroth, who's obsessed with becoming ascended for reasons that I won't spoil, but again, this game is about the gameplay, not about the story. Damn it, I had something for this. Uh, something, something. It's not about the plotting, it's about the purging! The 